I'm sure we're going to go to a, a familiar passage of Scripture. That's okay. Praise God. Aren't you glad? Matthew chapter 26. I want to look down at verse number 6. We're just going to read down to verse number 13. Uh, we're going to ask the Lord to bless this time. I'll explain some things as we go, and we'll get into the Word of God. I hope that you're prayed up and ready to receive the Word, uh, because just so you know, there isn't anything in the Word of God that there is not something that you can't receive. Amen? The problem is we have a hardened heart. I hope that's not the case. Amen? But let's open our Bibles, Matthew chapter 26. If you don't have your Bible, uh, you can look up at the screen. But verse number 6, it says, Now when Jesus was in Bethany... In the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much. And given to the poor. <clears throat> and when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. And verily I say unto you, Who wheresoever this gospel shall be preached, in the whole world, there shall also this, listen, that this woman hath done, now listen to this, be told for a memorial of her. Dearly Father God, Lord, we love you, Father. I pray, Lord, that we would think about these things. Father, Lord, the word of God would become alive. <clears throat> Lord, I know I'm just a man. We're just, we're just men here, Father, this morning. We're men and ladies, and Father, we need the power and the presence of the Holy God. We need the power and presence of the Holy Spirit of God. And Father, I pray, Lord, for each and every one that's here, Lord, that you'd crick our hearts. Lord, you know the heart of each and every one that's here in this building. And Father, we pray, Lord, that the Word of God will prick our hearts. Lord, I know that we're a stubborn people. And Father, I pray that you would break that stubbornness, break that bond. Father, we want to be used for you. We want to be hurt. We want to hear from you this morning. Father, we desperately need you. Lord, we'll be careful to thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. My title, my message this morning is A Life to Remember. <clears throat> a Life to Remember. <clears throat> you know, it's interesting. I uh, had no idea that uh, Mima was going to pass away. And, uh, you know, it was an interesting funeral. <clears throat> it, it was more like a life to remember. <laughs> Amen. Uh, it was more about all the memories. 98 years of good memories. Uh, we didn't hear a lot of complaining. Now, I did hear some funny stories about how she uh, would get upset at the Rangers. Now, that's, I don't, in, in my book, I don't really know that that's complaining, amen. I don't know that I've ever heard uh, uh, anything about Miss uh, uh, Vivian being a complainer. I do hear that she sure loved God and she loved her family. <clears throat> if you needed help, she would help you. She is the type of person that wanted to be helpful. Now, I, I, we are looking at a couple examples. What's interesting is God gave us a living example. Uh, her name was Vivian. And uh, she gave us an, he gave us her example because she did leave us a memorial. She left us a memorial of how to live her life. And uh, I got to sit down with the family. And the family said not only did she show us how to live, she showed us how to die. Wow. That's amazing. I begin to think of Memorial Day, and I, I know that we're, uh, we're uh, celebrating the sacrifice of all the men and women who gave their lives for this great country. Just so you know, we wouldn't have this great country if it wasn't for God Almighty. We wouldn't have this free land if it wasn't for uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and putting God first. Amen. <clears throat> this morning, I kind of want to look at it as a little bit more spiritual, if you would be. Amen. Uh, what kind of memorial will you leave? What kind of memorial will you leave? 
What will people say of you? Can we take just a pause right now? You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you. There isn't anybody in here that would say, you know what? Uh, you know, we would say it in jest. You know, uh, that we're ready to go home at any minute. With Lord, you can go ahead and take me home right now. But there's not anybody in here that, if they were honest, that they would say that they would want just a little bit more time. Amen. Uh, but you know, when we talk about the rapture, now we're all ready to do that, right? Because in the moment in the twinkling eye, just so you know, death ain't much different. We're just, for some reason, afraid of that. Amen? Right? But let me ask you this. Just like I asked some of the people yesterday, uh, you, know, I, you know, the first thing they did is when they came to me, I'd say, well, you're coming over to get God's word, aren't you? They said, yes, sir. I says, that, and that means you're looking for God, aren't you? And they says, yes, sir. I said, that means you're trying to get your life straightened out. Yes, sir. And I says, can I ask you a question? If you were to die today. Hey, Christian, can I ask you a question? If you were to die today, what would be remembered of you? What would be told of you? Now we see in the story here what Jesus himself said will be told for all time. And it was, a, it was going to be a memorial that he even wrote it in the book. <clears throat> What's yours? What's yours? You know, I know that uh, we've done, uh, I just, uh, we, I've had the uh, opportunity. It's not, uh, it's not amazing to do funerals i like to to preach at funerals because that's usually the time that you can get the presentation of the gospel out but uh tommy's funeral was a uh, military so was able to go out to the uh the military area and man I, have you ever seen so many graves and it's like they never it's never stopping i mean there's They've got so many tractors and so many people in there. And they were developing a new part. And, and they were pouring new concrete streets and uh, pouring new areas. And it's never ending, friend. It's, are you listening? It's never ending. And as you look across the fields of the crosses, those represent lives, friend. But for me, the only thing I see is crosses. You know, as a preacher, I begin to look across those fields and wonder how many are lost and how many were saved. As for me, as I, 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 I like to go to, I don't know why, I like to go to old cemeteries. And I do, I like to read the names and stuff like that. And, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not being weird. I, I just, I like it. I think it's amazing. Amen. And, uh, but I, I, I'm still, I, my mind goes spiritual. I begin to think, uh, what kind of memorial did they leave? We say, well, they were a, uh, if they're buried there and uh, they're in the military, they left, a, they left a memorial. They left a memorial for this great country. I sure hope they left a memorial for the Lord. Because just fighting for this country don't get you to heaven, friend. Have you ever thought if, the, if you were to die right now, I mean, can you be honest this morning? If you were going to die right now, and God was to tell you that soon as the clock strikes 1230, you've got 36 minutes. That gives the preacher enough time to finish his message. You've got 36 minutes. And you say, well, preacher, you better hurry up. i got 36 minutes. i got things I've got to get ready to be ready to die. No, friend, if you've got 36 minutes, you don't have any time to do anything. Make sure you're right with him. Let me ask you, what kind of memory or memorial can you leave in 36 minutes? So if we're honest, what we've lived our life and how we've lived our life, let me ask you this. How have you lived your life the last week? How have you treated and responded people the last week? How have you witnessed the last week? 
You say, well, oh, I, I didn't feel good last. Hey, there's no excuse. Because when we stand before the Lord, there's no excuse. He said, so I, I, uh, get that I out of there, friend. What's your memorial? What's your memorial? There should be nothing stopping you from doing what the Lord has you to do. Do you know if you feel guilty for not doing something? Uh-oh. Amen. You say, preacher, quit talking about that because I didn't do that. Memorial. Do you know memorial as a preservative memory? You know what I think is special here? Is that last verse, Jesus himself said, he is going to preserve this memory for all time. Everyone's going to know what you've done. It was a pretty special act that she had done. Do you you ever think about this? You think maybe she didn't really, she didn't really think it through. I mean, I don't think that she's like, well, I, I think if I do this, then Jesus is going to make me a memorial. If I do this, He's going to put me in the in the Scriptures, in the Gospel, and uh, in the New Testament, and people are going to know that I did this. No, I don't think she did that. And if you've seen the response of the disciples, you would know that's not what she did. I think that she was probably trying to sneakily do it. Uh, she probably knew that she would get flack, amen. Uh, but you know what? Let me tell you something. Doing the right thing sometimes brings flack, don't it? You know, I was expecting some flack yesterday. We didn't get much, did we? We got lots of praise. I was so thankful. You know what's interesting is that God knows when we need it. We had some uh, 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 some leaders from the Blue Ridge camp. It's a it's a uh, I believe it's a, a Church of Christ or uh, Assemblies of God camp out here on 66. Uh, they saw us. They had to, they drove in. He got out of his car and he walked up to us real tall and heavy, and he was a smile from ear to ear and just wanted to thank us for doing what we were doing. Amen. Like we were doing anything that was could not been done. You know, I'm just thankful that people are thankful, aren't you? Yes. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 7, the Bible says, The memory of the just is blessed. Are you listening? The memory of the just is a blessed. That means the just is the true, the honest, the righteous, the faithful. The memory, the memorial of those who are righteous will be blessed. Amen. My friend, if you don't know what blessed means, it means happy. It means uh, favor with God. It means spiritual happy. Uh, it also means this, and I liked it. It says made happy. Amen. You want to be happy or made happy. Uh, do the things that God has asked you to do. You heard Rochelle's uh, testimony. And she said it was like a what? Like a drink of water. Do you know it was a blessing, amen? I, I have not had that great of a turnout to be able to talk to people that much about the Bible in a long time. And let me tell you something, that was like a fresh glass of water, amen? Uh, we were to the point where we were thinking that, hey, this place is a reprobate. Uh, we just need to leave this place. No one wants to hear the gospel, but we just found out that's not true. You just have to keep going until you find what's the right niche, amen? I have no idea why they would want the Bible, but I'm thankful they do. You know, one only had one person looking at it, and they went like this. Is this the King James Bible? I says, yes, ma'am. Oh, good. You know, a lot of us would say, well, you better make sure that you have every Bible for every person. No, it says free Bibles there. They're just glad to get one. You know, the memory of the just is blessed. 
That means that uh, we'll be produced or filled with, we'll be formed or filling with happiness. Amen. I don't know about you, that just after doing that, that I just couldn't stop telling people about it, amen. Uh, we had our men's Bible study. After we did our men's Bible study and we had a good prayer time, after that, me and my wife went out to eat, and guess what we did? We went and talked to people about how we handed out the Bible and how we could not believe. I'm telling you what, we were filled with good happiness. We were blessed, you know what? And these people, they, they didn't, I don't even know if they were, I don't even think they're saved, amen. And I'm sitting here, I'm telling people all over, hey, guess what we did? Uh, we handed out Bibles and, and people came to us and it was amazing. And they're like, Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm a preacher in, in Waxahachie and uh, oh, oh. Right. my wife's just looking at me like she's used to it by now, right? You know what I want? You know, I not only want my memory to be happy, but I want to be happy. You know, we talk about how uh, some of the uh, dead uh, military people that fought for our great country, if they were able to come alive again, that they would uh, be disgusted. Well, why don't we make them happy again? All they did was follow God's word. The neat thing about our Bibles, it's got the flag and an eagle on it. I think that's pretty cool. Fits right in with Memorial Day, don't it? You know what it fits right in with? We need to get our country back to God. And guess what? It starts with you. Because if you're not in it at home, you're not going to be in it out in the world. If you're not in it, if you're not praying at home, you're not going to pray with the world. If you're not studying His Word at home, you're not going to be out sharing it with the world. Hey, if you're not out handing out the Bible and handing out tracts, you're not going to have anything to be happy about when it comes to other time. He said, I just don't have any praise. I don't have any happiness because you haven't done nothing. You know what you sound like? You sound like the disciples when I got something to complain about. Well, we could have sold that and made some money for that. Well, that's not what it was for. I want a memory to be happy. I want to be happy. I want my memory to be true. I want to be true. I want my memory to be positive. I want to have a positive testimony for Christ. I want people to look at my memory and my testimony of Christ and know that I not only was happy, but I was true and I was faithful. That's my memory. True and faithful to the Lord. You know what? I'll go one further. In my memory, I want my memory to have the old book t tied to me. Amen. Uh, just like me and Chris, we were out there waving them Bibles. Amen. Remind me of that song. Wave the answer back to heaven by the... Right? Some of us are embarrassed to do that. I ain't embarrassed, amen. Hey, we're waving the Bible. It says New Testament, amen. Free Bibles. Come on over here. I don't want one of them, right? Amen. Right? I heard someone say, you know, I, I don't want no, I don't need no Bible. He will. He don't need no Bible right now because he thinks he's young and he's invincible. Let me tell you something. You'll find out real quick uh, that you're not so invincible, amen. I'll tell you, I want my memory to be happy and true. I want my memory to be positive testimony for Christ. Let's look at an example here in the gospel of someone, someone doing and giving 
that causes her to be a memorial. Let's look at her real quick this morning. Number one, I want you to see something. Look at verse number six. The Bible says, and now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, amen. Uh, you know, you got to first understand something. There's something going on here. I want you to understand this as well. Uh, just look where Jesus is, amen. Uh, just for you to understand something. Uh, we have the disciples here. We Mary, we're talking about Mary. Uh, Mary is there. Uh, but I want you to see something, and this is important. The very first part of this, we see Jesus comes in. Just so you know, they're all present with Jesus. And so what we see, this is my first point, we see his presence. Now I want to be honest with you, child of God, that his presence is with me just as it is with you. How you use it is determined on you. You say, I'll come hand out those Bibles, but uh, I, I'm not going to say nothing. Or I'm going to give to those Bibles, uh, but I'm not going out there to hand them out. It's too hot. Let me tell you something. Hell's pretty hot. Right? We're trying to save them from that place, friend. Let me help you with this. The Bible's a command. It says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. It ain't too hard to hand a Bible. You know, when you have someone and you've, let's say you've got a food table set out. That's kind of what we did. We had a table set out, didn't we? And we had Bibles set across them. Inside each Bible, we had our gospel track in there so they could see our church name. We had those set across there. We had a sign. And we're all standing out there with a Bible up high. What's the difference between that and having a food table? And people are going to come. What are they coming for? They're coming for what's on the table. There's really no difference. The Word of God is spiritual food. The other is physical food. Do you know why Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I'll freely give? Because he knew he could give them silver and gold, and they'd be hungry tomorrow. But he knew if he gave him Christ, he would be taken care of for all time, friend. We were offering them food. And when people come for food, they're thankful, aren't they? You know what? How about you? Jesus' presence. We see a state of being in view or in sight. He was close, friend. He was close. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, we already know the disciples are there. Jesus is close, friend. Friend, let me ask you this. What kind of attitude, what kind of memorial are you going to place well, in the presence of Jesus? Huh. You know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for his presence. I'm thankful that it's near. You say, oh, I don't feel like it's near, amen. Uh, you may not have a good relationship with him, but let me, know you, let me help you know this. Jesus' presence is near. Jesus is here for you. What do you do for him or do with him? What you do with him and for him is your choice. Amen. Do you know why handing out Bibles is like a glass of water? How about you? I was ramped up after that, right? No, I was sunburnt. Right? My bald head got sunburned. I was dumb, didn't bring a hat, amen. But they ain't wasn't going back, my friend, because as soon as we pulled up, start setting up the table, before anybody else got there at twelve thirty, people were urgh, stopping and coming to get Bibles. I wasn't gonna leave. You know, I actually felt bad leaving. You say, why? Because uh, you know, every time we got a wave and then it would clean out. Then we'd get ready to pack up and we'd get another wave. And, then, and I'm like, well, Lord, I, I don't want to miss all the waves. The neat thing about being in the presence of the Lord is it's quenching. It's quenching. Maybe his presence to you today is to get right with him he said preacher I, I just couldn't hand out bibles or i just can't visit with anybody can i tell you something if you're saved that's your commission 
There's not one person that gets saved that's opt out of that. So if you're not witnessing, then shame on you. Let me tell you something. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Can I be honest with you? Then you, his presence for you is for you to get right with him today. You say, preacher, why you got to say it so mean? I'm not saying it mean. I'm being authoritative. That's the difference. You need to get right with him today. Going into all the world and preach the gospel, that is a command, friend. You can, uh, you can uh, scuff it all you want. You can say, I can't talk, I can't do this. But you can hand out a gospel track. You can hand out a Bible. You can point them to the preacher. You know, even people that can't talk can do that. The other day, uh, Brother Netterville, he's the one who uh, uh, gets the Bibles for churches to be able to hand them out, uh, uh, out free. Well, we get them for $1.15 a piece, but uh, he's the way, reason that we get them at that cost. And he was, I shared our picture with him. He was so thankful to see that. He said, thank you for the update. I sure appreciate that. That means a lot to me. Let me tell you something. He, he's not just having other churches do it. He's doing it almost all week long. He's out with churches all week long. Can I tell you something? That they don't just have adults out there. I seen a three-year-old out there handing out a Bible. And you can't do it. No, what it is, is you, you need to probably, the presence of Jesus is near. You need to get with him today. You need to get with him today. You know what? When you get with him and get right with him, you need to start doing something for him today. Do something for him. Maybe you've never received him as your savior. Wouldn't that be an amazing thing? To be in such a small church and to still be lost. Wow, what a memorial that would be, wouldn't it? You know, I, I gave a clear presentation of how to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior at, at uh, Vivian's uh, uh, funeral uh, Friday. And then uh, after I have done that, I, I, gave, I, I offer through the, through the prayer, I offered how to say a prayer if you were to call on the name of the Lord. And uh, you know what is interesting, after I got done with that, I let them know that Vivian's in heaven, by the way. She doesn't have her perfect body, and she's not in paradise. I got so sick of hearing that. Uh, there is no more paradise. She's in heaven. Uh, and she doesn't have her perfect body. Boy, I'm telling you what, there's some people that just don't know yet. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then, and then they are alive or remain. We'll, uh, get the, we get our bodies at the same time, friend. Uh, she's in heaven with her soul. Amen. And she's dressed in the garments of righteousness in her soul. She doesn't have her body right now. Amen. Uh, she's going to wait till you get yours. Even during the tribulation, we learn the tribulational saints that die, they have to stand under the mercy seat. And the Lord says that they all have to wait till all the tribulational saints die. Then He'll give them their body at one time. Uh, they don't have their physical bodies yet, friend. They're but they're in heaven. They're not in paradise. But let me tell you something. If someone would have got saved at the funeral, I, I don't know. I don't need to know. I'm not the preacher that likes to mark his belt on how many people get saved. It's not about that. It's about giving the gospel out. I sure hope someone did. But you know, if someone did, listen to this. The Bible says that all of heaven will be crying out. Now, can you imagine? Miss Vivian's up in heaven. We're doing her funeral. Someone accept Christ at her funeral. And all of a sudden, she hears the angels Praising God and the name of uh, the, 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 the book of life is it opened up. And as it's opened up, they're praising for such and such as his name is being written in the book of life. You don't think Vivian's going to hear their name? Well, praise God. How about you? That gets me excited. What a memorial that would be. Number two, we see in verse number seven, there came a woman having an alabaster box of a very precious ointment. The first thing we see is his presence. The next thing that we see here in this 
passage of Scripture as we see the example. Isn't it neat how the Lord gives us an example? Aren't you glad He does that? Amen. You know, He, he wants you to first know that He's there. Right? You know, uh, while we've been going through this sickness of uh, mold poisoning, it's been pretty brutal. I've, it's been a real rough time. I, I think that's probably some of the thing that my wife is going through right now. It's, it's playing a trick on her disease and making it worse. So you pray for her, amen. Uh, pray that the insurance will release the funds. Uh, we haven't heard nothing from any of the other stuff. Just keep praying for that situation. Uh, mold poisoning is, is deadly. Amen. But God gives us an example. Amen. He also makes sure his presence is known. One thing he has done through this is he's always said, you're on the road to recovery. Don't we, don't we like hearing that, Miss Sue? Uh, yeah, you know, I know you're having a hard time, but, you know, you're on the road to, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure Greg, I'm sure Greg wants to hear that, amen. Uh, you know, you're on the road to recovery. Oh, I feel awful. I feel awful. Yeah, yeah, I'm on the road to recovery. I feel awful. Right? Yeah, I remember, I remember uh, me and my wife were praying, and the Lord uh, put that on my heart, and he's telling me that I'm on the road to recovery, and I'm, and I'm like, are you serious? I feel like I'm dying. You're, you're, you're not dying yet, huh? It, it, you know, think about this, you, you wimp, right? I just want you to know how much you need me. Do you feel my presence now? Now let me give you an example. This is a, considered a high honor of service. Did you know that? I'm sure you already knew that alabaster box is a, and that ointment is, is considered a high honor of service. This would be something uh, that co is very costly. Amen. Think about that for just a minute. Very costly. The proof of our overpowering love is to take that which we hold in high honor and sacrifice it to the Lord and here we see a perfect example of that amen in spite of what everyone else says she brings an alabaster box of ointment which was very precious very hard to get and pours it on the Savior was she the only one that really understood that Jesus was going to die Remember, he tells them that she was anointing his body for burial. They didn't get it. Hmm. Her pouring it all upon the Savior, all of it. She could have used a part of it, right? No, she poured it all upon the Savior. This is a picture of how priceless he is. More than anything this life has to offer. You know what Mary is saying here? Oh yeah, man thinks this is really priceless. This is so great, amen. Let me give this over to God, all of it. Boy, God forbid if we do that, huh? I was looking for my... Here's a good example. Huh. Boy, we think these are so precious, don't we? This is our bank. This is our computer. This is our GPS. This is how we stay in touch with all of our family, isn't it? Boy, it's precious, isn't it? Is it? You know, we have missionaries that go to the foreign field. And we have some that have no way to have cell phones. We have some that have no way to have power. We have some that don't have any way to have air conditioning. You know, we have a young man that we support 
I'm fully behind him. He got in a motorcycle accident. Then they got real sick. You know where he's at in Africa is not real clean. And you know why they sent us a picture of the hospital that he's in on a text message. It didn't look like no hospital. It looked like he was on a table. A bunch of people standing around. Flies flying everywhere. He looked sicker than a dog. His wife was laying up next to him crying. She got sick. You know, they're doing better now, but man, we're spoiled. Man, we're spoiled. You know, we see Mary here. He says, you know what, Jesus? You're worth everything to me. When are we going to get to that point in our life where we know his presence is there and we'll follow the example? Jesus, you gave me everything. I, in turn, want to give you everything. Remember, we're trying to talk about a life of memorial. What will your grandkids say about you, Papa? What will your grandkids say about you, Nana? She was fun. That's not going to help them get to heaven, friend. Number three, I want you to see in verse number eight and verse number nine, the Bible says, but when the disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. You know what's interesting? As soon as you choose to do what's right, as soon as you recognize the presence of the Lord and you give all, this is when all the critics come out. And the interesting thing about the critics is they're always the church people. You ever find that weird? Huh? You're what? You're going to what? <laughs> yeah. Huh? I, I remember, I remember uh, when I told people, I, well, I waited a long time until people I surrendered to preach are like, you what? You? <laughs> you can't even go to English class, right? Uh, you can't even give a speech. You're going to do what? Isn't it funny how when you give all, that's when the critics come out? The critical spirit. Critical is to be inclined to find fault or to be negative. Can I tell you something? You keep following the Lord and don't let the critics stop you. You know what's interesting? She already did. <laughs> she ain't going to be picking that ointment back up, friend. It's all out. Amen. <laughs> what are you going to do now? I, I don't know. I, I'd like to go back into time, and, and, uh, and I don't know, I'm kind of an ornery guy. I, I'd probably like to say, hey, disciples, are you, you going to go get some cups? It's her oil. It's her 100%. It's what God wants. When are you going to give yours? Would you like to ask him that? It seems whenever you decide to do something big for the Lord, that seems like that's when the critics comes out, don't it? You know what I've always told people? And just to be honest, if they're complaining or criti criticizing you, you're doing the right thing. Amen? Right? Huh? What's that guy doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Stupid Bibles. Right? I'm doing the right thing. Just keep smiling. I want you to look at verse number 10 and verse number 13. The Bible said, when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, and he, in Jesus awesome, why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. Now look at verse number 13. Verily I say unto you, 
He, you know, before I go down there, just so you know, he answers all their silly questions. You know, she could have sold this and gave it to the poor, but you're always going to have the poor. You don't have me always. He says, Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this, and I love the way he talks, that this woman hath done be told for a memorial for her. Here we see the answer. We see the answer. You know what? You don't have to answer. Christ is the answer. Aren't you glad? Do you notice the whole time she didn't have to say nothing? In that neat, Christ's presence is there. She's given all. She's got the critics, and Christ answers. I like it when God answers, don't you? Here we see the answer. For all time, everyone will know what she did. Wait a minute. That was a waste. No, it's not. For all time, she did such a great thing. And they're boggled. Let them be boggled. You know, there's uh, been people that I've seen that uh, they've said God had called them to preach. And uh, I'm like, what? They can't even talk. They stutter. Right? Do you know, come to find out, I, I, there, there's a lot of them. They're one of the most powerful preachers you'd ever hear. And people will come and they'll pack the house out. And it takes them forever to get anything out. But everybody's listening. It's because they gave all. They dumped out all the oil. They said, Lord, I want you to use me. Lord, I want you to use me. You know what? I want to be a memorial for him. You know what? What a blessing. I don't want to be on the walls I don't want to be in the books. I want to be a memorial for Christ. I want to be totally dumped my life on the Lord Jesus Christ so that he can answer all the naysayers. What a memorial. <laughs> what an answer. Let me ask you this morning. What will be your memorial? Have you been thinking about it? What's going to be your memorial? You know, some people would say it this way. What's going to be your epitaph? What is the one thing they'll remember about you? As James gets ready to play a verse invitation, I, I want to share with you a story. I have memories of my grandparents I have memories of my grandparents. Do you know those are memorials? You know that, right? My grandpa, when we went to see him, always took us to church. He smelt like big red gum, Miss Sue. He always chewed big red gum. He used a wash rag to comb his hair because he was so bald. But we went to church. Do you know what? I remember going to church with Grandpa. I couldn't stand going to church with Grandpa. Because I was lost. The overwhelming conviction of the power of God. I remember not waiting to go home. I remember we went home back to Wyoming. Went to church. Got convicted again. Accepted Jesus Christ when I got home. With my mom right beside my bed. Do you know what my grandpa did? He sent me a Bible. What a memorial. He's my favorite grandpa. Why? Because he cared about my soul. I still have that Bible. He wrote in there the date that I was saved. He remembered. I don't know if you remember those little scratchy things that you could scratch and smell. He wanted to make the Bible cute for a kid, I guess, and put a few of those in there. I don't really care what he did to it. It's from my grandpa. What kind of 
kind of memory are you going to leave? Do you love people that way? Let's all stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. What impact?